Hey, I'm Deborah Allen. I just want to welcome you to All Access TV right here on the Country Music Cruise. Are y'all ready for a good time? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I cannot think of a better way to start off this trip than with two of my favorite people on the planet. We go way back. I mean, way back. Talking about my favorite two old hippies, Howard and Dave Bellamy. Let's hear it for the Bellamy Brothers. <laughs> telling everybody how far we go back. We go so far back. I think I was about 18 years old when we first met. You haven't changed at all. Y'all haven't changed at all either. Yeah, right. It's just, a, no, you <laughs> haven't. Um, when I met you was uh, out in California. Actually, I was aware of you before uh, California because I fell oh, in love. Beware of us. <laughs> beware of you. I fell in love with Spiders and Snakes. What a great song on Jim Stafford. Tell me about that. Yeah. Tell you the truth. Um, I think we can be pretty loose on the ship. Yeah, we can. Howard and I got really drunk one time. Oh, no. <laughs> just, just once. Imagine Just that. one time. Okay. And we came in, and uh, we, we, when we get drunk, we didn't want to go in the house where our mom and dad was, so we slept in the barn at this old hay shack in the, on the ranch. And we had a couple sleeping bags put in there. So we went out there, and uh, we were both pretty plowed. And uh, woke up the next morning, or later that night, Howard... Uh, was surprised by a chicken snake in his sleeping bag. <laughs> I made a new door in he that made barn. A new door <laughs> in the barn. And so that's kind of where Spiders and Snakes started. That's a, oh my God. That was kind of the beginning, because that old place was full of spiders anyway. So we, um, uh, that's where the idea came from. I wrote that song, and then uh, I was, uh, oh, it was a six months or a year later that, um, that Stafford got a hold of it, and... Uh, you know, we, we we ended up moving to L.A. As you know, that's where yeah, we met you. Yeah, that's where we met. Yeah, we all lived in a, a house together. Yeah. We didn't live in, together. In the right Hollywood the Hills, I know it. Hey, so, but I think one time you told me that was the fastest you had ever seen Howard move. Oh, absolutely. was when that snake was in his sleeping bag. It was bag. absolutely. A big old chicken snake crawled in there, and he made a door. That and was the, time to move. You yeah. know what? We've talked about so many things since we've known each other, but one thing we haven't talked about really is, and I was just thinking about this, how y'all got your start is amazing because it was at the Rattlesnake Club. That was yeah. one of our first gigs we ever played. We had a little trio with our dad. Uh, you know, he played a lot of string instruments, dobro and banjo and a little fiddle. And so we had David played accordion and I played some banjo. <laughs> it was a strange, wow. strange little trio, but we played. That was one of our first gigs we played there with our dad. Wow. We didn't get paid, but uh, it was one of our yeah, first Yeah, we were live pretty gigs. much sitting in the back of a, his pickup truck under an oak tree and people would come by and watch <laughs> us play and that's yeah, funny yeah that's a long time ago we were and then y'all played in some like r&b clubs around and yeah we backed up uh, well see our band we, we put a band together and at that time we were one of them the only integrated ba bands because we had this we had the this they've just integrated the schools they moved four black kids to our school and first one guy that came over we took him and made him a singer because <laughs> Because he could do all the, the R&B tunes. Yeah. So we could play country, we could play rock and roll, we'd get him to come in and sing the Sam and Dave songs and all that. So we had kind of a, you know, a pretty mixed up bag there. We could do anything. There. I know, and that's I hear that in your music so much. It's still mixed up. It's still yeah. mixed up. I like the way y'all mix it up. Yeah. But we backed up, uh, we ended up, uh, because of that, we ended up backing up people like Percy Sledge and Little Anthony and the Imperials. Right. And, uh, you know, bands that would come in and want just to get a band for like well, that while they were in like Florida. Like the old Chuck Berry, you know, Chuck Berry would go to town and just pick up a band. He wouldn't, yeah. you know, he was too tight yeah. to, to, to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. pick him up. Yeah. I've seen Chuck. He sets that bag on the stage <laughs> yeah. and he's got his pickup band and they go to town. That's, That's right. Cool. So we did that and among other things. That's something I'd always wanted to ask you about. I mean, really and truly, we go so far back and after Spider and snakes and you got out to LA that's when I really really got to know you and that's when your career really took off because you guys fell into hanging out with some pretty cool people well we yeah. were um, we were doing demos with Neil Diamond's band yeah while uh, while Neil was on kind of a hiatus there for a year or so and, and all the guys were doing demos with us stuff we'd write and Howard was we had some of the same habits yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're all good yeah, chemical and, inspiration <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever and Howard was on the road a lot with Stafford and <laughs> I was as you know because you were there sometimes too I was living in the basement with Gallagher the comedian who uh we don't wish that on anyone <laughs> <laughs> and uh 
Howard would come, him and Jim would come in, you know, and then we'd write while he was there, and, and uh, Gallagher was busy making his sledge matic in the basement. And uh, one day the uh, alarm went off when, when Jim and Gallagher was gone. It was just me and Howard there, and we were working on some songs or something. And the alarm went off with a brand new burglar alarm in, in, in a big old Hollywood mansion. On the, one of those with a hammer on it sits yeah. on the side of the old style. Right, right. So we couldn't get it turned off. We had our headphones on, and... We couldn't get it off, so Howard picked up the sledge matic and hit it. It was handy. It was, there, it was just sitting right there. I and said, he, I, got, I can't stand it anymore. And he, and he knocked that big old bell off the wall and tore, the, you know, tore up a brand new burglar alarm, of course. <laughs> That's funny. Gallagher was pretty funny. Uh, you know, we were all uh, just brainstorming one day, and he told me, he said, Deborah, you need to sing crazy like this. Crazy. <laughs> Cross your eyes every time you sing the word crazy. He's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. But... Um, Another funny story that came out of that time was right when uh, Let Your Love Flow took off, you were working with Jim, helping him road manage, and yeah. suddenly I heard that you had this really bad back. Yeah, I faked that pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> he did. You faked that so good. It well, faked me off for 20 years. Well, we were... It was it's strange. Oh, I can't tell this whole story. Because it'd be <laughs> yes, you can. It'd, you be can a, it'd be incriminating. Look, this is all well, access. Yeah. Anything let me, goes. Let me just tell you. Heavyweight dudes in the biz, or the music <laughs> business, right? Oh, I'll just tell right. you, we were, the, the, <laughs> our, the song was like number 10 or 15 on the charts and barreling up the charts. And they still had Howard on the road. They couldn't do without. Oh, they just he, couldn't do without. He couldn't get home to, for us to go on the road with the so, Doobie Brothers and the Beach Boys. They still had him on the road, and uh, we were down, the guy, we were the down here. Told, you know, we were down later. here playing the Fountain Blue with Raquel Welch. Oh. And I said, I'm this close to home. I have a number ten record on the charts. Right. I'm, I'm getting out of this. <laughs> so I faked a back injury. I know, and I years faked later. It really good. You did. Never you... thought I had a bad back for 20 years. My <laughs> husband Raymond Hicks came up to you one night, and he hugged you and slapped you on the back, and I said, "Don't hurt his back." And you go, "What's what's wrong with my back?" And I said, "Your back, it's hurt." And you go, "Oh, I faked that." <laughs> I thought that for all uh, those years, but you know, I really feel honored because you know when things are happening in your life they you're, they're just happening you don't think about it but these days i think back about being in the studio when y'all recorded let your love flow and what a an iconic moment that really was i mean you know you don't even realize it until it's been happening now it's sold over five million it's had over five million airplays it's sold so many platinum records that was such a special day yeah you know we thought it was a great song and uh it was, I guess, greater than we even thought. It was, uh, it was more of a, it was. You couldn't have picked a better first song to have in your career. It was more of a launch. I mean, we, it not only was a huge record here in the states, but it was a number one song in 15 countries. Wow. So That's I think amazing. they tried to send us to every country at one time. We were just everywhere. <laughs> that and, is uh, amazing. Yeah, it was truly amazing. And. You also mentioned one time to me that you had, like, a cold that day, and you were always, like, wondering if your vocal... I had the flu when I sang <laughs> that song, and uh, I still cringe when I hear that vocal. But, Do y'all uh, cringe when you hear that vocal? Uh, I love yeah. that vocal. That is We try awesome. to give him the flu now again when he, <laughs> when he sings, because that record was so big. Yeah. Exactly, and it was such a huge pop record, too. Yeah. And that's what's really different, is you guys really got launched in the pop world. No, the, you know who I was with the first time I ever heard that song, on our song on the radio? Who? Roger Miller. I oh, love Roger. Yeah. What was that like? Well, it was it was crazy because we were at a party. We were playing Lake Tahoe with Jim, and Roger was playing one of the casinos. And uh, they had brought a single of the record, the first single I had seen. And so we couldn't get out. It was Christmas. It was Christmas. We were all snowed in at Lake Tahoe. And uh, so we decided we couldn't fly home to Florida, so we would just have a party. And... Uh, Someone, uh, Rip Taylor, remember the guy through tore the confetti? Yes, through the, he was I was the, around then. Well, this he, is all starting to sound real familiar. He was at the party. And, <laughs> I think uh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember. So I don't remember a whole lot. But anyway, Rip said, I'm going to get it played. There was a radio station in the casino. So he ran up there and insisted they play it. And Roger and me were down in the room. And uh, as they played it, we, he, Roger turned the radio on to listen. And he and, he and I sat, the, sat together and heard that for the first time. I wow. can't tell you what he said. Wow. <laughs> but he was right. Again, it's all access. Anything goes here <laughs> on the country music cruise. It's sort of like right. being in Las Vegas. Whatever happens in Las Vegas. I'd like to do Las this Vegas. again, so I think I'll tell <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll let you off the hook. But, you know, so y'all were playing with the doobies and all kind of pop artists. 
Uh, we were we went out uh, originally as the opening act for the Loggins and Messina breakup tour. Uh-huh. It was our last tour together. Wow. We were the opening act for that. And then we were leaving there to go on the road with the Doobies and the Beach Boys. And um, and then uh, our equipment all got stolen in Chicago one night. Ooh. And uh, kind of screwed up, screwed up the tour. <laughs> Hasn't always been easy. No, no. No, it's so glamorous. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a glamorous life. But um, yeah, you know, we, we played with so many people then country and pop and rock and everything you know and and, and still do in a way so it, it's we've always liked that though but i think that's what's so cool is because to me your live performances were always like kind of cutting edge you guys were out there with all those guys and i think it then it started filter filtering over into the country world well country you know the outlaw movement kind of came along a little bit after that too and and it it made it a little easier for us but we because we were we were country Right. But at that time, the country wasn't, didn't have quite as much of an edge. Yeah. And, and so it, it was pretty much I down think we're there. the only guys with a pop record ever that had an outhouse when they were growing up. <laughs> 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 so we were a country. That's right. Speaking of we being country, we are on the country music cruise. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. Are y'all having a good time? Yeah. We're going to pause for the calls. We're going to be right back in just a few with the Bellamy Brothers. Sitting here kicked back on the country music cruise, having a great time hanging out with my buddies, my favorite two old hippies, talking about Howard and Dave Bellamy. It's so good to have y'all. Thank, Thank you, Deborah. Deborah. I think we said that, though, didn't we? <laughs> always good to be with you. It's always good to be with you. You know, uh, actually, as we're sitting here talking, I'm hearing audience members call out names of your songs. That's one that yeah, I hadn't thought about. It's the wrong about. title, but she, she called it <laughs> yeah. out. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, we have the song on the... 40 Years album called um, The Dying Breed. Yes. And she requested Old Dinosaurs. Oddly enough, everybody, everybody thinks the title's Old Dinosaurs. Everybody calls it that. We, we yeah. should retitle it. Yeah, we should, for sure. You know, I don't mean to skip ahead, but that is such a great album. 40 years. I mean, you've been in the business for 40 years. That's amazing. And really, truly, I said in the beginning, you haven't changed. You really haven't. You still look the same to me. It's amazing. We lived that long. <laughs> Hey, tell me one of the wildest, craziest stories from out on the road. Something wild and crazy that you can tell. Yeah, um, well, you know, there's a lot of crazy stories. Um, one of them that people usually <coughs> like to hear is we, uh, we had a song out in the early 80s, 80s called The World's Greatest Lover. And it did really well. I think it was top five, or maybe it went to number one. David wrote it about himself. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was doing really really well, and uh, we decided for merchandise because nobody had done this at that time okay. in the country. We decided to get uh, women's bikini underwear to sell at merchandise, and that was and your sell. idea. <laughs> I don't know if it was my idea. I think it was. It, was, oh, it did. It worked though. Are it, you sure yeah. there were women's underwear? Yeah, it, okay. it said it said oh, they were. It said women's. world's greatest lover on okay. them, and so we put them in the merchandise, and and they were selling like hotcakes. You know, they just sold yeah. really really well. And um, we had this uh, uh, relief bus driver, and we one night um, we were leaving up, I think we were around uh, New Jersey or somewhere, and we put him in this store more, you know, on the top of the bus. Yeah. And he didn't latch it down. Oh, it was like oh, no. 40 dozen or something. Yeah, 40 <laughs> dozen <laughs> bikini panties and that thing. And so... Uh, I think we were in Wisconsin. Was it Wisconsin? Yeah. We come anyway. We come down the road there, and, and uh, uh, every trucker and every car cars were honking, and truckers were calling on a CB, and, <laughs> and they said, "Hey, man!" I said, "I saw a deer back there with panties on his antlers, <laughs> and, and there's underwear on the fence post." And, uh, <laughs> so we pulled into a truck, and we, you know, we lost about ten thousand dollars worth of underwear. There. Oh my God! They were just yeah. scattered. I don't know. It must have been the last fifty miles. That's a pretty good story there. Okay, what's your story? That was my wow. story. <laughs> I, I told him. <laughs> Howard always goes to the stories he can't tell. Yeah, well, there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, okay, moving right the, along. Well, David, no. one time, he, okay. he walked off stage in Norway, and there was into the orchestra pit. And I, I looked over. That's and not a just, funny story. It almost <laughs> killed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to me. <laughs> Uh, I looked over to just, I looked over to, I just felt like something. I looked over and I heard a noise and he was just gone. And I looked down, he was on one of the road cases they were all down and he was rolling around on a road case. Did you there. get hurt? The only thing that saved it's my pride. life, <laughs> the only thing that saved my life, there's two things that saved my life. 
Uh, that moonshine these, you had These before. girls had brought a bunch of Norwegian moonshine, <laughs> and, I, and I was so loose, I think. And, and then a road case broke my fall, so I didn't go all the way. All the way down. And I hit a road case. But, uh, yeah, I was sore for a week or, or two, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Notice how Howard's story d- reflected <laughs> yeah. back over yeah, on you. Of <laughs> He's well, got, that's kind of his yeah. style there. Yeah, well, uh, they have plenty on me, oh, I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, we, we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay, but speaking of panties, what about the <laughs> song that you wrote? Not that this has to do with panties, but it just made me think of that song, If I Said You Had a Beautiful Body. Well, it does kind well, of kind of have yeah, something sure. to do with panties. See the segue? See what I'm going it's for? It's a theme going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so on tell me about that song. That's it. Um, beautiful Body. I was actually, the first time I got that idea, I was actually in Jim's basement. Oh, Okay. Because it was actually just before we moved back to Florida from from Hollywood, and um, I had been watching the um, old Groucho Marx "You Bet Your Life" re- yeah, reruns because right. used to come on in L.A. I and I, I love that thing. And I was watching that, and one night he he said that to a big busted blonde contestant <laughs> on the show while he was shaking his cigar. Oh. And I said, you know, that'd be really a really good song title. And I, I, did, I didn't really get the melody or anything, anything at first. I just kind of said, you know, just carried it around in my head for a yeah. little while. And we, we moved back to uh, Florida. And um, I wrote that one evening sitting in my single wide trailer at the ranch. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, you do that pretty good. You can get some great ideas. You just never know where you're going to no, get No, you don't know where they come from. It's just sometimes. Because that saying had been around forever. Yeah. I mean, even before him, I'm sure that people had said that. You know, I, I used to have guys come up to me and say, hey, I used to use that on gals back in the, you know, 02 or something. <laughs> People still, they'll probably use it on the cruise. Y'all can use that. That's free game. Yeah, it never worked. Never worked for me. <laughs> well, it never worked. No, no. That's funny. Well, there's a song that's uh, really, really one of my favorite songs. And uh, I think that's what's so cool about being brothers, you know. I mean, it's really tough being in the music business because sometimes when you're just a single actor out there all by yourself, but you guys have each other. And that's good and bad. <laughs> yeah, it is good. I know y'all got some secrets we'll never know. But uh, I love your harmonies together. But also, I just love the way that you encourage each other with your songwriting. Like when Dave, you know, you wrote the song Old Hippie and you took it to Howard. I want y'all to talk about that because this is Im- amazing. Well, we always, um, we usually bounce things off of each other because we, we, we grew up in this business around some pretty crazy characters, and not all of them you could trust. <laughs> and you know some of them. Oh, I do. <laughs> and so um, we ended up, you know, thing, just bouncing things kind of off each other because we, you know, uh, we, we could always be pretty honest with each other. So, uh, you know, we wrote a song at the, stu- at the studio or something. I'd call him over and say, hey, listen to this, see what you think. So we were going through songs to do, and, and I, had, uh, I had put down a demo of Old Hippie. And I, I said, I want to show you this. But I said, I don't think it's uh, something we probably record, but I just it's something we like, you know, yeah. because uh, I'm not sure anybody would relate to it. So Howard heard it and goes, man, we gotta we got to cut that like now because uh, he said, I think everybody relate to it. So uh, we uh, we did, and then we played it for, uh, I think Jimmy Bowen heard it. And he, yeah, Jimmy Bowen, who's, who was the head of MCA Records at the time, and luckily he, he was an old hippie. Yeah. No one knew it. Right. He was a closet pot smoker yeah. but, uh, he was but thank goodness and as he and his wife both loved it and uh, but we still you know put it on the album we had no idea that it was going to become a single yeah you know uh, to speak my old hippies in country music so we recorded it and, the, and another story the, the first version the original version <laughs> yeah that's a good story on it was that uh, there's a line in there that um, he's just too friggin old <laughs> was the original line. So we that's what we recorded. That's how it was written. And we were off in the northwest somewhere and uh Bowen calls and says, Hey, you boys have to get here back here in Nashville and change a word in this song. It's it's gonna be we're gonna release it radio. So we flew all the way from I think Washington State back Seattle to, or something back, back to Nashville to change the word friggin' to damn. <laughs> Friggin, they changed friggin' over damn. No, we, 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 over we, yeah, well, it's, that seems he's, backwards to It's me. just he's too well, damn okay. old instead of he's too friggin' old. Okay. And they said you got it. So we changed. We flew all the way back, changed one word. Changed one word, and then and then and then turns out radio 
started playing the album version with the friggin' in it. <laughs> so it was all in, all in vain. So. All in vain. Hey, we got to take us a friggin' break here, if you know what I mean. <laughs> We're going to be right back on All Access right here all right. on the Country Music Cruise with Howard and Dave Bellamy. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being here on All Access TV right here on the Country Music Cruise. I am so excited. I've been having so much fun hanging out with my buddies, the Bellamy Brothers. We go so far back. You know, I could sit here and talk to you all for hours because there's so many. You know what? We did some shows together, and uh, I was just honored to be out on the road with you guys. And they've got so many hits. Y'all are in for such a huge treat because they've got hit after hit after hit. I think the only thing you had time to say at one point was, between singing hits was, how about that Deborah Allen? <laughs> that was it. I mean, it's hit after hit after hit. In fact, y'all had like a lot of hits in Europe that uh, yes, were never we've, released we've recorded here. some songs there that were hits there and uh, never released here. And we've recorded songs that were here that were hits over there that we've never released here for some odd reason. Y'all actually lived in Germany for a while. You had such huge well, hits Well, we there. toured there so we, much. We were there so long, we might as well. I got married there, there once. You I, got married. Yeah. I knew we'd get to a story you could tell. <laughs> Yeah, we stayed in, in Europe a lot yeah. uh, over the years, and we still do. We we toured there. We did four tours last year. Yeah. Probably maybe three this t this year. That's amazing. Well, I want to talk. You know, I know everybody's uh, excited about being here on the cruise. Probably got some swimming and all kinds of things to do. And I know you want to enjoy the cruise too. But I do want to talk about your brand new album, Forty Years, because that's an incredible album. Well, thank you, Deborah. Thank you, thank Deborah. You. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's quite a milestone um, now that it's put together. We didn't think that much about it in the beginning. You know, we just said, well, we got to put something together, but we didn't want to just rehash the hits, and so we decided to do 20 hits on there and 20 brand new songs. So it turned out to be quite a package. It is quite a package. I mean, 40 years. And also the thing that I love about it is that you partnered with Susan G. Komen, and up until December 31st, a dollar of every uh, Amazon download and iTunes download went to breast cancer research. Right, right. Which was great. And we did a video with the cancer survivors right. as well. Yeah. Exactly cool. right. That's what I love about you guys. You have a big heart, and you don't just talk about it. You do something about it. Well, it was, it was quite an experience. We had about 50 of the ladies who had all survived breast cancer, and some of them had had 20 surgeries, and so it was pretty amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, the video was incredible. To let your love flow. Yeah. They were letting their love flow all over the place. Yeah. Did, did any of you see that video? Well, no, we you, did it in Texas. They did it in sure, Texas. Yeah. If you get a chance, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah, or, or our website, either one. Yeah. And so you're going to be performing on the cruise uh, one of these nights coming up here Yeah, soon. we are. A couple of times. So, yeah. So that's going to be incredible. Uh, one, uh, before we go, also, I want to say one of my favorite songs. When I saw you play at the Franklin Theater in Nashville, Tennessee, I mean, Franklin, Tennessee, was a Whistling Dis Dixie. I love that song. Thank you. You know, one of the things I love about it is Wally's, Wally's yeah. harmonica. Harmonica, yeah. That's, that's one of our favorite old songs of ours as well. Yeah, they haven't stopped us from playing that yet. <laughs> no, they can't stop you no. from playing that. <laughs> You guys are the ultimate Southern boys, and really and truly two of my favorite old hippies. In fact, you know, we go so far back, really, it feels like we really are brothers and sisters. I always call them my brothers, not just because they're the Bellamy brothers, but I, I feel like we're connected at the heart. We um, have known each other a few years. <laughs> we have. Well, okay, we got to have one more fun story before we go, and it's got to be juicy. Oh, oh wow. Because this is a cruise. You, you're, this story is going to set the tone for the whole trip. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're setting up. So you're setting, pull one out on us. setting the bar kind of high now. Yeah, got to set it high. They want to have a good time. Well, I can't, I don't know. We've had a lot of things happen on the road. You just, sometimes it's just hard to know what people want to hear about. But, you know, we had they a lady. want to hear the dirt, I know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right. We had a lady have a baby in front of the stage one night. Oh, no. And yeah, right, in, right in the middle of Redneck Girl. <laughs> right in the middle of Redneck Girl. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she named she named him Bellamy. She her the baby her the, the, girl. the kid's middle name is Bellamy. Yeah. That is perfect. So yeah, so they yeah they had to. Um, we didn't stop playing. <laughs> and, never. We never did. And they, <laughs> and they just they backed the ambulance. I mean she she delivered the baby before the ambulance got there. Oh it was God. it was there and they were That's... they were holding it, but um, they backed the ambulance. Everybody got out of the way and it came through and they they got her up and put her in the ambulance, her and the baby, and took off. Oh, but, my but, but it was already born by the time the ambulance arrived, so, yeah. 
So we have a lot of those interesting those Spokane, things happen. Spokane, Washington. So a lot of your music uh, people have probably fallen in love on and babies were created, but in, also in your case, you saw one being born right in front of your eyes. Right, in, right on the front row. We had a girl uh, hair catch on fire one time <laughs> oh, no. during the show. We didn't stop playing then either. <laughs> but she was like this close to us. And, uh, I looked over, there's candles on a, on the table, and she leaned over, and I just saw poof, <laughs> up in flames, yeah. and the uh, guy put the tablecloth over her head to put it out, and, You're kidding me. and we were singing, and I saw this, you know how burnt hair smells? Yes. <laughs> well, I saw just a cloud of it coming to the stage, <laughs> and uh, we just kept singing. Right hey, there listen, all. I'm going to remember that on this cruise, because I'm telling you, this <laughs> we're going to catch things on fire around this place. We're going to have a good time this week with Howard and Dave Bellamy. Y'all, let's hear it for them. And just remember, the tablecloth on the head it works every time. Thanks for joining us here on All Access TV on the Country Music Cruise. Thank you, guys. Thank you.